After winning more games than we have won in seven years in Denver, Sean Payton is amidst his competitive rebuild, which means we're remodeling the house while we're living in it at the same time. And a part of that is replacing talent with more quiet, hidden talent. Uh, and I think we're doing that with a heat-seeking missile that all of us have forgotten about. I'm going to break that down in this video and more. If you're new to the channel, my name is Ben. I'm a diehard Denver Broncos fan. Helps me out a ton if you like and subscribe. Uh, and leave comments and questions. Actually, this entire video was spurred by a question by one of y'all asking me to look into this player who I had completely forgotten about amidst my hype because I was so excited about Brandon Jones, so excited about PJ Locke, that I forgot all about the Denver Broncos steal of a strong safety in JL Skinner. We're going to look at what Sean Payton has said about him, look at some of his college tape, uh, and why I'm actually so hyped about what he could be in this Jim Leonard system. So we're going to dive in here. So JL Skinner, we know uh, that going into the draft several years ago, that a lot of people were saying that he was a early day two pick coming out of Boise State. So you watch his film and he's playing on that bluegrass and it makes you feel really weird. Uh, and there's not a ton of NFL talent that comes out of Boise. But man, this guy stood out on tape, stood out on film. And when I watch his highlight uh, mashup on YouTube, which I'll link in the description, because watch it like if you're trying to work out and get hyped, because this dude hits so hard. Almost every single one of his hits, I'm like, oop. That's a, a penalty in the NFL. You can't hit like that. But, man, this dude lays the wood uh, and, and is huge. Well, he had a torn pectoral muscle. And you can just imagine for a, a dude, a strong safety, who plays closer to the box. You know, in NFL football, you have your strong safety who's guarding the tight ends and involved more in stopping the run, which is one of the Broncos' biggest problems on defense. And then you have your free safety who's more of a roamer, plays more off the line of scrimmage, and he can be a smaller guy. Well, you look – at what a torn pectoral tendon means for anyone who's involved in any pushing. It really like takes that entire side of your body out of uh, the equation. And so that's a, a really hard injury to come back from. So then he comes back from that injury and has kind of a down year, but he had incredible mentors in obviously Kareem Jackson, obviously Justin Simmons, who's leaving, but then Caden Stearns, PJ Locke, all that and more. And one of the cool things is, is just hearing how much those guys encouraged him saying, Hey, you're more than capable to play in this league. Uh, and so just keep your confidence up. And he has kept his confidence up. And from what we hear from Sean Payton, uh, the sky is truly the limit for him with this new Jim Leonard system. And we'll, we'll dive into that for in a second here. But again, looking at his pre-draft grades, you have, he will eventually be a starter back in the 2023 draft. A massive, massive guy. So he's 6'3", and you look at both Brandon Jones and P.J. Locke, they're like 5'10", 5 5'11". 5 they're like my size, right? But obviously, they probably can lift more with half their body than I can lift with my entire thing. Um, and, but you look here, our safety room, we lose Justin Simmons, and we're, we're freaked out about that. But we're replacing Justin Simmons with P.J. Locke, who has just been an incredible leader. I've talked about that ad nauseum on this channel, but I feel really high on him. And I'm feeling really excited about the addition of Brandon Jones. Uh, you see him leaving the Dolphins. I actually follow several Miami uh, YouTubers on Twitter, and they're just saying like what a massive loss that was for him. And if you look at him the last several we weeks of last season, he was one of the highest rated PFF um, rated safeties in the league at free safety where he had two interceptions. He had zero touchdowns allowed and he's playing tough talent in that division. I think he had two games against Josh Allen in this stretch. And still um, when passers were throwing against him, they had a 39 passer rating, which is crazy because this is the one that's not out of a hundred. Right. So that that's pretty crazy. But again, you look at, at uh, his size and his frame that we're talking, he's 5'11", and you look at P.J. Locke again, who I'm also really high on, he's barely 5'10". And so we know that that could definitely be a problem. If we're starting both of those guys, they really are built more like free safeties. And what we need is a guy who can come in and lay the wood. And I think that is who we have in J.L. Skinner. He, uh, his player comp coming into the draft was Cam Chancellor. And so you're talking a guy at 6'4", and we're going to pull up some of his hits in college. Uh, and you just look at a guy where if he could figure out and actually, you know, in the NFL, a half second is the, you know, even a quarter second is the difference between a crazy hit and a touchdown. Like that's the kind of speed you're talking about. So it really at this level is about knowing where the play is going to go 
because your raw athleticism can't do it alone for you. And so I think he is now getting that, and you're starting to see that in what um, Sean Payton was saying. So again, you look at his RAS score. He, because of his torn pectoral, he wasn't able to do a lot of these things, but you just look that um, just based on but based on his height and weight, he's one of the highest. They He couldn't do these other ones because of his injury, which is why he did indeed fall to us. Uh, and again, you're just looking here. He compares very favorably to Cam Chancellor, a pro bowler, a Super Bowl champion for uh, the Seattle Seahawks, who we are going to beat in week one, right? Absolutely, we're going to beat him in week one. So here's what Sean Payton said about him, because a lot of people had forgotten about him, again, in all the hype, because I'm so excited about how P.J. Locke and Brandon Jones are going to step in. I, I forgot all about him, and here's what Sean Payton had to say about him, and it makes me excited. This is going to be one of those, you know, we talked about this training camp. We're going to, we're going to see a lot when the pads come on and we're in these team run pass periods. You know, do we feel like he's better with the, versus the run? Do we feel like he's better versus the pass? I do think he has good instincts. We, I'd say the second half of last season, even when he's running scout team, we noticed on offense quite a bit, man, this guy all of a sudden was, was jumping routes and he, he was someone that was, you know, that stood out on the tape. So um, I think he'll want to build off of that. This is good. So high praise from Sean Payton. Obviously, he's not giving him all the flowers right there, but saying like last year, just running against the scout team, meaning like that's the, the guys who are practicing against Russell Wilson uh, last year. Just the fact that he's already picking routes um, and he's reading it, making good instinctual decisions there. I think that is a really exciting thing because you got – um, I think more and more so in the AFC West, it is going to be about a battle for the trenches. You saw Jim Harbaugh just mortgage their entire passing game there by uh, getting rid of Mike Williams, getting rid of Keenan Allen, and, and then drafting Joe Walt right away. They are going to be running the ball down people's throat. And so having a guy who's 6'4", to put in there, uh, I think is a really good thing. I think what Jim Leonard is really going to do here, he is our new, uh, a lot of people wanted him as their defensive coordinator, and he was hired as our defensive back coach slash passing game coordinator on defense. And I think he is truly, he believes in positional flexibility. And so I would not be surprised whatsoever uh, in third down situations, could we see situations where we have JL Skinner playing in a linebacker role, knowing uh, that that could stop the run there? And we've heard just tons about how how you've seen Jim Leonard, even in what they're allowed to talk about at OTAs, uh, moving safeties to different places, playing safeties at corner. Uh, so it's going to be really, really interesting to see how he's used. So I wanted to just end here with uh, kind of just a little bit of hype here. So just like Look at at this dude and just think about, man, if he could do some of this in the NFL, what would it look like? So, again, there we got the Boise uh, blue field, which is crazy. But uh, just take a look at this. We got a little receiver reverse here and number zero right there. Do, just like laying that dude out. Here we see a little pass to the flat causing an incompletion there. Not afraid to stick his nose in there. We got a little quarterback designed run there and and stepping up and making the hit there. Uh, and again, play across here, we see an interception. So he can be help, really, really helpful and really, really dangerous in pass coverage as well. Another pick right there in the back of the end zone. And here he is stepping up and and laying the wood there. Uh, and again, just you're talking a massive, massive dude who is now feeling his oats and and feeling hyped about this upcoming season and his interviews. He, he seems like he is locked in uh, and ready. So very excited about uh, what he could be and what that could mean for this uh, this positional battle that we have. I think the safety room is one to really keep our eyes on because we got P.J. Locke, we got Brandon Jones, but then we also uh, have DTL who also has an injury. So, uh, you know, we're now talking about having a deep receiver room. We're talking about having a deep running back room. And so obviously you can't carry all those guys into the regular season. And so are, are we taking five running backs into – the, the 53-man roster and what is special teams and the new kickoff rule, what is that going to mean to it? So I think this year, the the really exciting thing and the sign of having a great team is our guys who you cut immediately picked up and put on other rosters. And it's been a long time in Denver since we have cut a player and he's ended up on another team. Uh, instead, we are usually the ones who like, oh, awesome, the Bears cut this guy, we'll grab him. 
And so I think what's a really cool sign of the Denver Broncos that we are bouncing back and that all of this talk about us only winning five games is just absolute malar- malarkey is that we are going to have some players, whether it's a running back, whether it's one of our receivers who's not going to make the roster, whether it's one of our safeties who's not going to make this roster, we're going to have players from the Denver Broncos who are going to go and make a difference on another team, which will be kind of like a bummer here, but also great news because that just means our talent pool is way deeper than anyone thinks. And I know I'm preaching to the choir because all y'all, you believe. Oh, I got to go again. That one just hung up there. All right. After three, it's just embarrassing. So I'm done.